The famed Silverstone Circuit, the home of British motor racing. And for one fortunate gamer, the fast track to a racing career. This is GT Academy, where North America's top Gran Turismo gamers battle head to head to become a Nismo athlete and a professional racing driver for Nissan. Training with some of the world's best driving instructors, 12 competitors embark on a series of challenges testing their speed, strength, and soul. Come on, don't quit! How bad do you want it? Judges Rob Barf, Danny Sullivan, and Forrest said watch over every move to discover North America's next Nismo athlete. I'm your host, Dahani Jones, and the race from virtual to reality is on. That's not a video game. <laughs> it's real life. Times Square, New York City. What an exciting place. We're here with the 32 fastest Gran Turismo gamers who beat out thousands of others online to get here today. All the competitors are virtually racing. The pressure is on all these guys, because today we picked the 12 that are going to Silverstone, England. Threw away a win right there. That was ugly. That's a very impressive run. Thank you very much. After the qualifying, they'll be doing a media quiz where they get grilled in front of the TV camera to see how they'll be able to handle themselves. Now we're trying to find somebody for the real world of racing. I put everything on the back burner, school, work. This is my fourth time here at National Finals. This year is definitely my year. Go and ready. I want to ask bad as I want to breathe. I like that because he's so good control. Whoa, 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 dude. I'm here to win. Nothing else will be good enough for me. Go, 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 go. And hell, I missed up, man. Woo. Did great. Thank you. Have fun in Silverstone. <laughs> Appreciate it. here at Silverstone and it's everything I thought it would be. And when you play it in the game you get to see all of the architecture and then to see it in real life just makes everything much better. It's so unique to be here. Someone's life is going to change, period. This is it. This is my chance to just take it. I'm gonna do everything in my power to make sure my dream happens. I have the most mental strength out of all the guys here. I want to take it up against the top names in GT racing. Speed, strength, and soul. Yeah, I'm going to take every chance I can to win this thing. I'm going to keep going till I collapse. I was born to be a Nismo athlete. Now that I'm here, I'm ready to go. Let's put the helmet on, click the visor down, and let's get to it. Welcome to Silverstone Raceway, the home of British Motor Racing. Yeah. The moment has arrived. You have beaten out some of the best Gran Turismo gamers in all of North America. So congratulations. This is an opportunity of a lifetime. Now the one of you who displays the three pillars of a Nismo athlete, speed, strength, and soul, will win this year's GT Academy and take home the prestigious red helmet. Now the journey, starts with the first benchmark challenge. You're gonna take the Nissan 370Z for a flying time lap around the Stowe circuit. The judges wanna know if you have the raw ability for speed and car control. The time you set today will show you and the judges your improvement throughout the week. Have fun, good luck, and remember, the judges are watching and everything counts. The benchmark challenge shows us the most about the competitors. We see the raw speed on the track, and we keep looking at it through the competition to see how much they can progress. Going into the first benchmark, we're all a little nervous. We haven't been in the cars yet. It's huge to show the judges your adaptability to just jump into a new situation and, you know, swim instead of sink. Obviously, we have to do good or else don't know, we come in here unprepared and we'll get eliminated early. Finally, our 
our first competitor, we get to see if they have some speed. Edgar, first lap, using it. That's good. I went out on the slow circuit first time in a 370Z Nismo. It was out of the world. They go out on the track, they set a time. Then the data is collected. They go talk to the instructors about where they're going wrong, how they can improve, different spots around the track. Crucially, where you really lose the time here isn't so much the breaking point, it's actually how long you hold the brakes for. There were three major things that I had to work on, mostly uh, related to braking. And once you've lost the momentum, it's gone, and you lose time all the way around to the next breaking point. Then we go back out, and they set another benchmark, and the improvements are quite substantial. Way better, way better. The, the, the body language of the car was better. Line was good, it was tight, it was using the curb, it was hard under braking. With the benchmark challenge, we're not looking just to eliminate the slowest or the weakest. We're looking for one to identify themselves as the favorite for GT Academy. You imagine going out first time with everything on the line, there's gotta be a lot of pressure. Too safe though. Too, too safe. safe. Too safe. Of course, I'm not going to be perfect out there first time by. I'm not going to be able to go right at it immediately. I have to improve. I feel like just push it to the limit and hoping for the God that he don't crash. He's not scared to stand on the gas. Nope. Terrible line. A difficult challenge going, you know, straight on to a track you don't know, isn't it? I always feel fast. I'm always confident in my abilities. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Come on. And I think I'll be among the top, if not the very top. After we went out the first time, we had the opportunity to look at our data. You want to carry a lot more speed there. You know, so that really, for me, is just having a bit of aggression and just pushing the car. It was massively helpful. And then we got a chance to go back out and do it again. Well, I'm about to get into the car for the second time. So do you know the plan now? I'm not braking late enough. Yeah, and hard enough probably. Yes. Yeah. My name is David Griffin, 36 years old, and I'm from Branson, Missouri. I am a, an entertainer. Singing is my second passion behind racing. I grew up going to dirt tracks, uh, watching the dirt cars, and always wanting to be in them, but never being able to afford them. I didn't exactly have the best childhood. It consisted of parents with drug addiction. And having to be raised in that environment is not a fun environment. When I was 15, I went to visit my grandparents in Pennsylvania for the summer. I kind of begged my grandparents to let me live with them. Me and my grandparents joined a gospel group. We traveled for about 10 years, and I came to Branson and ended up auditioning. So I've been singing here for seven years. I sing on a showboat in a lake. We seat about 700 people in our theater. I do 12 shows a week, and uh, I sing in a quintet. It's exciting now when people find out that I'm married to a local entertainer, but just to think that I could be married to a professional race car driver makes it even more exciting. I have an incredible wife. We've been married 14 years. We have an eight-year-old son together. My dad likes cars so much that he really wants to drive a race car. Family is the reason that I live every day. Uh, every Sunday after church, we like to get snow cones. Uh, we like to ride bikes and play Frisbees. I definitely don't want my son to have the childhood that I had, and so this academy is the opportunity to show him that he can do whatever he wants and that he can fulfill his dreams. So this is David. David. Come on, David. Oh, come on, David. He's getting a gas mileage, David. <laughs> Going for EPA rating. I still feel like I'm probably not hard enough on the brakes. Matt Wright was just way too conservative, didn't show anything. 
They've done a thousand laps on a computer. This is the first time where they have scary things now. There's no reset button out there. Pushed a little too hard. Kept trying to go more and more and more, and I found the limit, I think. <laughs> Went a little too much. Nicholas Let's go. is taking Nicholas. an extremely conservative outlap. It was a little bit better. I still was making some mistakes, but I felt like I improved, but there's still a long ways to go. All right, guys, listen up. Got some news for you. The results of your first benchmark challenge are in. See how you stacked up? Remember, this is just the beginning, so take a look. When I saw my time, that was a reality check. Maybe I'm not as fast as I thought. You know, it was disappointing. I thought I went out there and put a decent time in, but obviously I just didn't drive fast enough. I was very, very shocked that I was actually number one time on there. I'm around 11 other strong competitors here, and I didn't feel I got the full potential out of the car. When you look up and see your name last out of the 12 guys, and you're like, okay, the next event, I gotta prove myself. Otherwise, I'm going to be going home. Nicholas Hammond, 20 years old, Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. I was probably six years old when I started kart racing at Roar America. When I was really young, my dad raced cars, so I remember being three, four years old, sitting in a car seat with a helmet strapped on, being ready to go out on track, and then when I got to the age, he gave up his racing and kind of supported me. So from that point on, we spent a lot of our efforts on karting at Roar America. It was a great father-son bonding experience. We've done so much together. The first year, we, we were really, really bad. We were actually so bad that some other fathers came up and were kind of like, you know, do you have this figured out yet? We were just happy just to make the whole 10 laps and maybe not get lapped. But eventually, that year, we ended up winning a feature. And in the next three years, we won three go-karting championships. And in 1934, my great-grandpa and my great-grandpa's brother-in-law started Calangus Motors. Worked there in the summer when I was probably 12 years old, just kind of helping brakes, tires. I mean, other kids would go out, you know what I mean, partying or going to campfires and stuff. And I'd either be helping my dad kind of understand the car dynamics of it or helping him with the go-kart. On that Tuesday night when we'd be out at the car track, it was a family affair in a sense that everyone was pulling for me and they know how much I want this and how much I would put towards this. If I wanted to became a professional driver for Nissan, I would be very excited, happy, just relieved that all that hard work to get to that point was just all worthwhile and I finally reached my dream and goal of becoming a professional driver. All right guys, it's time to show us how much speed, strength, and soul you really have. This is the quadrathlon. This challenge is gonna push you to your limits. We're gonna be simulating endurance racing conditions. Here's how it works. The 12 of you will tow these single seaters to the starting line. We'll take off and run a lap back to the starting line where the first nine of you will drive the single seaters around the track. The three that finish last are out. Once around the track, you'll arrive at seven mountain bikes. The two that finish last are out. Once through the circuit, you'll find four Nissan GTRs and the first to finish will be safe from elimination. Your driving ability, racecraft, the physical fitness will be front and center. Y'all better bring it. In the quadrathlon, we're looking for great conditioning. So if they come in here not fit, that's a little bit of a mark against them. The quadrathlon is very much about speed, strength, and soul. And when it comes to soul, we're looking for the guys to push out of their comfort zone and see how much they really want this prize. Everybody ready? Woo! Come on! Come on, guys! Come on, guys! Come on, pull! Dang. The carts are kind of light on their feet when you're out on the keep track, up, but trying to pull them with your feet is a whole different story. Come on, come on, come on, don't quit! Come on, don't quit! I was kind of like, oh, I started looking around, everyone's just kind of blowing by me. 
I really dug deep, really, really, really pushed hard, and I crossed the line first and struggled with my harness a little bit to get it off. Come on, guys, get those harnesses off. I think everybody was struggling. I even saw a few people, when they got out of their harnesses, that tripped. Oh, you gotta go, go, go. Catch up, let's go. Once we took our harnesses off, we had to run about a mile. I ended up passing six or seven people. After that, it was all adrenaline that took over. Started running down Stowe, and then Nick came blowing past me and was uncatchable. Wow, he freaking trucked. In hell. Started picking it up and passed Tommy, and then Tommy's like, go get those GTRs, and I thought he was setting me up. I'm like, okay, just keep going. Nicholas, at the beginning, he, that guy is an endurance machine. He had a lead over everybody else. I'm not saying he could relax, but it took some of the pressure off of him. Come on, Nick, you f***ing own him, next boy, come on. Good lad. As soon as I got the harness off and I took my first step, I felt this nasty pop in my left leg. It's not good to not do well in the quadrathlon. It's, it's stressful. Quadrathlon really delves down into the soul of the competitor. Who wants it the worst when they're tired and they can't do it and they, they know they have to get to the end of the run to get one of those cars? Nice job, Nick. Nick! Nick! Woo! Go, man! Then the guys come back around. There will then be only nine Formula cars sitting there from the 12 drivers. Mark went by me going through the end of the run. Oh, the Canadian second. One second in the run, well done, Mark. But I was able to hold third to the single seaters. Tommy, through here, dude. Uh, fourth was Alex, uh, fifth was David. Come on, guys, keep going. This is for a car. The other competitors who are really good at running long distances, they caught me, but I still tried to dig deep I was, to the point that I was gritting my teeth. Right on, keep going, dude. Seven. I didn't want to be the person that couldn't even make it to driving in the IndyCar. Uh, eight, Russell, and then nine, Matt. I ended up not advancing to the second phase of the quadrathlon, which crushed me. Just didn't have the pace that other people had in the run. Uh, ultimately, it was my own downfall. The Formula car, the single-seater that we use on the quadrathlon, is the purest form of racing car we have here at race camp. When you put a guy in a single-seater, he either tends to sink or swim. Nick Hammond, go! It was wet on the track. It was very slippery, so it was tricky conditions. Even some of the instructors were saying, you know, these cars had never been in the rain, so we're not sure how they're gonna react. We're looking to make sure that they don't relax in the car because they still have to go fast enough to make sure that they're one of the seven that get to the bikes. And I just, I locked the brake up on accident, not meaning to do it, and it just happened, I spun. I actually got back on the track, I lost one position, so I felt that I now needed to step my game up to get into a GTR. Okay, this is our leader. I just ran a good, clean, consistent three laps, and that all went well. And then I came in, and I ran to the bike. These guys jump out of the cars, onto the seven bicycles, take off, they again have a course, and they have to go all the way around and end up over at the wing building in the pit lane, where there's four GTRs left. Still, Nicholas, from his amazing running performance, was out of sight. Okay, Mark, through, mate. Keep going, dude. So this is Tommy. Go, go. Get those gloves, helmet, start working Whoa. on it. Helmet off. Whoa. The car suddenly lost grip at one of the corners and I spun out. And it took me a while to get the car going again. He spun again on the wet grass. It was a disappointment. By that time, I know I was last in the single seaters and would make it to the bike. So see that spin yeah. might have gone move one of those guys up to seven. Yeah. Go, 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 go. 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 Go
tough to catch up. Wasn't able to get past two more people, so my uh, stint ended there. Once I got on the bike, I passed two bike riders, and so I was extremely happy with my bike ride. And after I kind of swung around and saw the garages, it was starting to, you know what I mean, come through that, okay, I can actually have a shot at winning this. Slow down, slow down, jump up. Okay, just dump the bike on the floor, good lad, go. If I ever saw Tommy gaining on me whatsoever, I'd stand up on that bike and just give it everything I had. How are you doing? Okay. Mark, go, 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 run, 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 run. Come on, catch him, catch him, catch him. Good job. Seatbelt on, seatbelt on. That's it, just relax, go on, seatbelt on. After struggling with my seatbelt, I ripped out of the pits. Now they're really exhausted. They've gone from pulling, to running, to driving a single seater, to being on a bicycle. Dropping the bike here, Alex. Go through, you'll get the last car. Go, 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 go. And now they jump into a 600 horsepower GTR to make sure that they don't make mistakes. So it's a very tough exercise. When I got to the garage, I found out I was fifth and didn't get to get into a GTR. Passed two people. Still didn't make it. One short. I'm on there. Driving the GTRs was an unbelievable experience. There's just so much power and it handles like a dream. as hard as I could, maybe a little too much at times. Okay, well done. Good. Came around the final few corners and took the checkered flag and I knew I could do it and it actually happened and it was just a very good feeling. Good job. Right. Second place. Good job, Tony. Holy crap. I'll take third. Good job, buddy. Breathe now. Yeah, absolutely. So fourth place. So uh, up to the podium then. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to the top. Very excited. Yeah. Nick showed us that the physical fitness component in a race car driver is so important because he dominated and it made it easier when it came to driving because he was comfortable and uh, never was really pressed. Well, you're safe. What you do? Yeah. You're safe. We can take Nick out of the mix. He was slowest in the benchmark, but proved himself tonight. So who else do we have? At the foot of the table, there are really three people that we're looking at. Donald, Brett, and Matt. The yeah. consensus is, almost from the get-go, Matt's been top of our list for the bottom. Because he hasn't yeah. shown us anything. anything physically amazing on the track. I've seen enough. Matt, Matt's a slam For me, dunk. Matt's a slam dunk. I wish I had made it to a bike and all the way to a GTR, but um, you know, we'll have another day hopefully, and hopefully I can come out and prove myself then. Now the toss-up is between Brett and Donald. They were virtually the same in the run. Neither one of them were particularly physical. I was really disappointed in my performance in the quadrathlon. In my eyes, I'm in the target zone, you know, and not the target that I want to be in. It's a subjective decision, but his attitude is way better than this. They really emphasize that we need to be pushing from day one to the end. Well, we're all in agreement. Let's go with him. Yeah. All right, you guys. Great day. We saw some tremendous effort, incredible abilities. You guys really stepped it up. The judges want to say something. Guys, we saw some really interesting stuff today, some big improvements. But remember, this is the first day. It's only going to get more competitive. You gotta keep digging, keep pushing, and be prepared tomorrow. Big first day, gentlemen. Well done. We've already amassed a huge amount of data that's gonna be useful for our deliberations going forwards. Be in no doubt that Boris, Danny, and myself have eyes, ears, and stopwatches everywhere. Unfortunately, there can only be one winner. Somebody has to go home. Matt Wright, please pack your bags and turn to your helmet. Your race from virtual to reality ends here. I was a little, a little caught off guard uh, to be the first name called. 
I had improved so much throughout the day, I thought maybe I'd make it another day. You got map? Brett Bennett, today is your day as well. Please pack your bags and turn in your helmet. Your race from virtual to reality ends here. I wasn't here for the journey. I wasn't here for the trip. I wasn't here for the friends. I wasn't here for the experience. I was here to win and get a racing contract, and it didn't happen, so disappointed, period. For the rest of you, know that this is just the beginning. This is when it starts. Get your rest and think about tomorrow. The competition will continue. Good night. No one is safe and, and to have two guys eliminated right out of the gate. Uh, I was beyond relieved to have made it through that first elimination. Racing, it's a pretty far-fetched dream. It's a really challenging attempt at a career. So going from here, it's not, it's not gonna get easier, so. It's as simple as that, I blew it. It feels great to finally make it this far in GT Academy after uh, trying for four years, but it's a little bittersweet uh, knowing I won't be back. Good effort, hold your head high. Uh, when I get home, you know, I'll definitely look into other ways to get into racing. Uh, you know, just keep trying, keep going at it, and I won't stop till I get there. Next time on GT Academy. Contact, contact, that's bulldog in your way right by. If we were going any faster, I think I would have had a lot of broken bones. It's the overtaking challenge. There he goes, go, 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 go. Okay, that was close. Come on now, let's go! If he stays up, they're going through the next round.